Thank you for listening to Crosslink Community Church Podcast. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.crosslinkchurch.com or join us in person on Sunday mornings at 1020 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss a single message and share with a friend. Thank you again for listening. Hey, good morning. How are we doing? Man, it's good to see you all here. Uh, I'm excited for this morning. Um, we got uh, a couple friends in town who are really the like family to us. Um, Luke to my left, Katie to my right. Uh, we man, you haven't even heard. Uh, we had um, uh, we met in Okeechobee, Florida. That's where we're both from. So forgive him for his uneducated ways. We both share it, but. Uh, we, uh, um, we've had many opportunities to do uh, youth camps together, and um, it's one of my favorite things to do, to get teenagers up on a mountain in Tennessee and, uh, and lead them and worship to the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, to allow teenagers to understand what it means to rest in his presence and anticipate what he wants to do in their lives. And it's crazy to me because we have the opportunity every Sunday morning to come here and expect and anticipate him to do something amazing. And so that's what we want this morning. And so um, before I I hand it off to to him, um, would you stand with me as we pray? Father, you are, you are worthy of it all. You are greatly to be praised. It is our desire in this moment collectively as a group of people to acknowledge the greatest name ever uttered. And that's your son, Jesus. And it's that name that changes hearts. It's that name that brings dead people to life. And it's in that name where chains are broken And it's in that name where we can find rest and hope. And it's in that name where death was defeated. And so this morning, we just want to be here together to celebrate all that you do and all that you are. We love you. good to be with you, to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hey, can we just take a couple minutes real quick, wherever you are, I don't know uh, what has happened this week, where your, your day has looked like thus far. Uh, can we just take a couple minutes and invite the Lord to be with us this morning? Can we do that? However you got to do, just lift up your voice, close your eyes, lift your hands, sit down, whatever you want to do, I don't care, but let's just invite him. Oh, Jesus, we invite you in this place. We invite you in this place. Come rule and reign this morning. <laughs> to be with you. Cause you've been so faithful. As faithful as a friend. so excited to be with you this morning. My wife, my wife Katie and I, we uh, currently we live in Johnson City, Tennessee, and we're at a church. Uh, they're called the Altar Fellowship, and we're just learning what it means to be a part of the kingdom and what it means to be a part of what Yahweh is doing throughout uh, the world, and it's been amazing. Uh, in Revelation 19, it, the writer John describes this picture of Jesus uh, coming on a white horse, a victorious king, 
a victorious Savior. Amen. Defeating death in the grave once and for all. And so this morning, what I want to do is release joy in this room. The victory of Jesus, the victory has been won. Yeah. We don't have to fight anymore. We have won a battle that we never had to fight. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so this morning, I want to celebrate that. Celebrate our King. Celebrate our King this morning. This is a song called Death Defeated. It's one of the songs of our house uh, back in Tennessee. And we just want to share it with you. It's the revelation of who Jesus is. So I want to encourage you. This is a part where uh, we've done a really good job of teaching people how to being emotional for Jesus, how to cry, how to how to weep, but man, we gotta dance. Because he's one, amen. I don't see anybody, I don't hear anybody. Amen. Amen. We gotta dance this morning, right? this morning here we go listen our king has won the war amen our king has won the war let's put our hands together this morning Love 
love has conquered all. The age of peace has conquered all. Say, lay your burdens down. Let's sing that again. So lay your burdens down. The war is over now. The age of peace has come. Every battle's won. Love has conquered all. Defeated and is finished. Sing it out this morning. It's there is his glory in hell. His silent, he has spoken. This is not the end of my story. Death. Every voice, all hail. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail Jesus. All hail Savior. Come on, let's sing it this morning. All hail. All hail.
on singing out. And all hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail Jesus. All hail the Savior of the world. All hail Jesus. Let's declare this 
this morning. Here we go. So you see the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. You send the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. Come on, church, let's sing that. You sing. Out of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, throned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, throned on the highest praise. You sent the Every voice you sent, come on. Out of an empty grave, seated alone in glory, thrown on the highest praise. Yes, you sent the darkness running. Out of an empty grave, seated alone in glory, and thrown on the highest praise. And you sent the Say his name this morning. Just say his name. Come on. Say his name. 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 Oh, we make much of you, Jesus. There's no other name like yours. There's no other name given under heaven and earth that which might be saved. That we might be saved in your name, in your name alone. 
Cause every knee will bow, every tongue will confess Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess That He is Lord, that He is Lord Tell Him He reigns Tell Him He reigns this morning Cause you reign above it all You reign above it all Over the universe And over every heart There is no higher name Tell Him Jesus you reign above it all so let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song sing hallelujah to the everlasting world there is no higher name Jesus you reign above it all Thank you, Miss Morton. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. The writer of Hebrews says, Let us draw near. Because of the precious blood and the sacrifice of Jesus, we let us draw near to the throne this morning with boldness and confidence because of who our King is. Amen. So let's tell him he's worthy this morning. Can we do that? Let's tell him he's worthy of our praise, worthy of our adoration, worthy of our affection. This morning, lift up your voice, lift up your song. You have access to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the creator of the universe. You have access to Him. What a gift. What a gift. Because you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. Yeah, you are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. He's worthy. Come on, church. Come on. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Then tell him. For from you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all. Come on, Crosslink, tell him this morning. Has he been good to you? Has he been faithful to you? And tell him, for from you are all things. You deserve the glory. If you know this old song, sing with me. And I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh. Let's exalt him in this place. So let's exalt him in this place. Let's not go any further without exalting him and giving him everything he's due from us. Everything he's due. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I don't care, no one looking around, nobody worrying about what's going on next to you, I want you to raise your hands to the King of Kings this morning. Can you do that? Can you lift your hands to him this morning? Lift your hands to him this morning. In a sign of surrender. We exalt you this morning. Tell him he's worthy. Tell him he's good. Tell him you love him. So with one voice, with our hands lifted to heaven, let's sing. And we exalt thee. Come on, we exalt thee. We exalt thee. Come on, tell him. Yes, we exalt thee. With one voice, we exalt thee, and we exalt thee, and we exalt thee, Jesus, we But we are here because you have aligned it so. And we want to use the breath that you have given us to ascribe worth to you, to exalt you, to let you know that you matter to us. Father, it makes no sense on why we matter to you. There is nothing that we bring to the table. There's nothing that we add. We don't bring any value, but for some reason, you look down and you see a treasure. 
And so your treasure here desires to treasure you above all things. So Father, before we go into studying your word together, allowing you to wreck our hearts all the more, we're going to sing this chorus one more time as our prayer of adoration and exaltation of how good you are. consistently without wavering let us bask in that this morning father we love you in your name we pray amen amen you may be be seated the children can be dismissed to children's church good morning Man, it is good to be here this morning. Um, don't, that was part one. Um, I am uh, uh, excited um, to share with you, um, to spend time together. Uh, and so we, uh, we've been in the series. So if, you, if you're new here, um, well, first, our, Sierra, our worship leader, got the opportunity to sit and worship with you, which is exciting. So um, she's done a tremendous job with our band, um, and so I know it has to bring joy to watch her um, her team worship. And so uh, it's great. But if, but if you're new here, we're sitting around round tables because um, we, we believe that this stage right here, what's going on up here, um, just facilitates um, us being able to align our hearts with God and us to be able to allow him to move within us in a greater way. 
Um, but other than that, it's not about the performance up here. This isn't the main focus. In fact, the main focus and the reason why you're sitting around round tables is that who's sitting across from you. That, that who's there across from you is the main purpose of what we do because our job, our desire, our longing here is to prize Jesus, make disciples, but love well. And we want you to be encouraged and loved when you walk in this place. Um, but the other thing that I would like you to find, hopefully, throughout um, your time here this morning um, is, is rest in all that Jesus has done for you. I don't, I don't think we... Grab a hold of the man. Having, having Luke and Katie in town is good for, um, is good for my family. Um, there, are, there are people that just refresh your soul. And, if, and listen, if you have not experienced that, it is worthy of your time to find men and women who drive you deeper into the beauties and reality of Jesus because it's refreshing. And so, uh, man, having them here is amazing. Um, we're going to turn an hour and a half service into three hours. Um, so that's great, um, or longer. Uh, but with that, you know, we're in this table series, and we're going to be in, um, in Luke chapter 19. Hey, Scott, you turn me down a little bit? Get a little. Thank you. Uh, Luke, uh, Luke chapter 19. Um, we're going to be talking about Zacchaeus. Okay, so... Thank you, wee little man. So a few of you are like, we, I grew up in Sunday school. Zacchaeus was a, yeah, I'm not going to sing. Listen, I'll ruin everything that's been going on so far. Um, but, but with that, we're going to deal with Zacchaeus. And I, and I hope to extract from this story, uh, this kind of children's story as we've allowed it to be, extract from it some details that I think will drive us deeper into who Jesus is. That's what I want us to have this morning. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, this week, uh, anyone ever do something embarrassing? Okay, good. Some of you, that's too much. Uh, and but like, like undignified, like, man, I, that, was, that was very embarrassing. Like, I can't, I can't show my face around there again sort of thing. Well, so this past week, um, I had the opportunity. I was at a, you guys know this isn't new. I, I had the opportunity to be at a cigar lounge, and I met some new guys, some new guys, a group of them, which I love. The conversations we get to have is amazing. But there's a handful of them, manly men mostly, and... Um, we were there, nice beards, you know what I mean? Like just, just there hanging out together. And, uh, and, and I was there. And, and so at this particular place, there was a movie on. There was a movie on. It was Sweet Home Alabama, which is a weird movie to have at the lounge. Um, but the cigar lounge, for me, like that's the most manly thing I do. Like I think some of you, like you like put pee ur- or like a, a doe or deer urine on you and sit in a tree stand at 4 a.m. Like that's manly. I don't do that, right? That's not me. But this is the most manly thing I get to do. And I, I'm there. Um, and, and all, all of a sudden, and just so you know, for those who do not know me very well, um, I can walk into a room with my kids watching a movie, and if it's a sensitive moment, I cry immediately. I don't like, I can't even control it. Like, sometimes it just happens. You know this, my kids look over at me, Dad, you crying, you're clearly crying. I can't help it. And so I'm like, I love Sweet Home Alabama. Like, I love that movie, all right? You can take my man card if you want, only if you can grow a beard. So either way, I'll either, <laughs> sorry, Luke. <laughs> My bad, bro. Uh, uh, either way, so, so here's, here's what happened. This movie's on, and then all of a sudden it got to that, that moment. And I couldn't, I couldn't control it. Like, I started to quiver a little bit. Like, there was, like my eyes were welling up with, with, with water, and I'm like, I'm in here with a bunch of men I don't know. And I'm about to sob. And so it was getting so bad that I had to get up from my seat and go to the bathroom. Just so they wouldn't see me bawling, right? I don't know what it is. I just have a sensitive heart. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But it was that moment. It was like it, I just felt undignified and embarrassed. I couldn't let these men see, see me cry. Um, but with, with, with that, the reason why I share it is because I don't think we understand the level that Zacchaeus went to in order to see Jesus. Some of the details in this event show how undignified he would have had to have gotten in order to see Jesus. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to read through the scriptures that we have, and then I'm going to pull out some points, and then we're going to end with some more, some more worship. So here we are. Luke chapter 19, excuse me, verse, verse 1. 
he, Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and, and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on the account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. Verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must, I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when, uh, when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. But, and Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. And verse 10, And the Son came, and the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for these scriptures, and we thank you for all that you do. Let us bask in what it is you have for us. There is no one like you. Father, we love you. And it's your name we pray. Amen. My issue has always been that we take Bible stories and we make them um, for children. And so more than likely, the only time you've heard about Zacchaeus is probably either through Veggie Tales or Sunday School or the Felt Board in Sunday School, and you haven't taken it any deeper than that. But I think it's my charge as a pastor and my longing as a man who loves Jesus and someone who wants to dive into scriptures is to connect all that God is doing through what he has written down. In fact, we see this beautiful artistry and consistency and faithfulness of God being the only author of scripture. That no matter where you start, Genesis or here in Luke, that God is the one through his spirit and through the men he uh, used to write down this narrative and the meta narrative being that Jesus Christ came to reconcile all things back to God through him. And so what we see here is Jesus' final journey to Jerusalem. Um, uh, he's about to lay down his life to be the perfect, once-for-all sacrifice for the salvation of all of humanity. Your Jewish reader would have understood the similarities and symbolism of how this opened up. That Jesus walking through Jericho to get to Jerusalem was important. Um... I don't know if you remember the event, but it would bring everyone's mind, the Jewish reader's mind, all the way back to Joshua when he was leading the Israelites into the promised land and he had to go through Jericho. And the fascinating thing that happened there is that God used the most unlikely character to display his goodness and faithfulness. That as they were going through Jericho, Rahab, who was a prostitute, a great sinner, was rescued and redeemed because of the help that she provided for Israel. And it's fascinating to me that as Jesus, on his final ascent to Jerusalem, meets another notorious sinner, whose family is also rescued and redeemed because of his faith. You need to understand how this all connects. Everything was always about Jesus. Jesus is the greater Joshua. No matter how courageous and mighty he was at leading this um, Israel into the promised land, Jesus is so much greater. And it's a reminder here of that. Now, some of these details, I only, I only have five points. That's it. That's all I got. But the first one is this, that Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and a very rich man. And the, and the reason why that matters is because he made it to the top of his occupational field. He's the chief of tax collectors. 
He has done well for himself. He is a wealthy and an extremely important man, even though he's hated and not wanted by his own people. And he gained his wealth by taxing and cheating his own people. There was this oppressive army, the Roman government that was expanding. And so tax collectors were the men who were used to tax their own people for the expansion of this oppressive army. And so he got his wealth and his status by the oppression of his own people. So it's safe to say that although he was wealthy and people probably came to the parties for the fun, he was not liked nor wanted. Zacchaeus within his own people would have been despised, hated, feared, and a lonely outcast. Whether he recognized that or not. But in his pursuit of his occupational gain. In his desire and longing for some type of wealth and some type of status, he got to a point in this moment of his life where he wanted to see and meet this man, Jesus. I contend that he was lonely and heard that this man, Jesus, was a friend to sinners, to tax collectors. And so when he heard that Jesus was coming into town, he wanted to see this man, Jesus. And a feared tax collector, chief of tax collectors, got to such a point in his life where nothing else mattered except for seeing Jesus. I I don't know in your life if you've ever, in the pursuit of something or in the chase of something, it left you wanting Like maybe what you thought you wanted in life was this particular title or status at work. Or whatever you wanted in life was a certain amount of money. And if you have X amount of money, then things will go well. But what you end up finding out in the long run is it actually leaves you empty. And we have a man, Zacchaeus, who rose to the top, yet in some way was still battling with something inside. So as the story progresses, he runs and climbs a a sycamore tree, Um, which brings me to my next point, uh, that in verse 4, if you see this, so Zacchaeus ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. Um, There's some details that matter here, uh, that Zacchaeus overcomes whatever obstacle he needed in order to see Jesus. He was small. I, I imagine here. I don't know what you picture him as, like somewhere. You know the little man syndrome? Yeah. Either way, he was small. So small that because of the crowd, he couldn't see Jesus. And so the only way to overcome his stature is to uh, go to a sycamore tree and climb it. Now, now what's interesting to me is the detail that it tells us is that he ran to this tree. Now, a dignified man in that society would not be running. In fact, I believe that there's only two reasons why you should ever run. You're chasing a ball or someone's chasing you. There's no other reason. But in that culture... A man of his prominence, a man of his stature, would not run. So the fact that the Bible tells us that Zacchaeus ran is interesting to me. And not only did he run, but a grown man was climbing a tree. Anyone climb trees, trees when you were a kid? Yeah, you still do that? Some of you are like, can't. It's not even possible. Like, my knee does not bend that way. For Zacchaeus... Him to run and then climb a tree was almost like what Jesus said the last time we were together, that a man must humble his life for it to be exalted, but someone who exalts his life will be humbled. And so it's almost like Zacchaeus, having the stature of a child, needed to have the faith like a child to see Jesus. The only ones you would have seen in a tree or running around would have been a child. And Zacchaeus, a small man, was willing to run to a tree, climb a tree, to become like a child in order to see the one who's going to wreck his heart afresh. 
Zacchaeus ran and climbed a tree so that in laying down his life, he will receive the greatness of the one who's about to pass by. Um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if anymore we are that persistent in our pursuit for Jesus. This has kind of become mundane to us. It's a normal thing that we do. We come here on a Sunday morning and we sing some songs, listen to a message, try to do better throughout the week, and then come back uh, later. Like I, like, I wonder if what you and I need maybe is a bit more encouragement of we can become undignified. We can become like a child. We can dance. We can sing. We can do whatever it takes to get over to see Jesus because being in the presence of Jesus is greater than anything else you can ever imagine. But we've settled for so many other things that distract us, that keep us from our own pursuit of Jesus. And as this continues to unfold, Zacchaeus, a grown man, climbed in a tree. Just, I, I need to help you imagine this for a moment. Drive through your neighborhood, get out of your car as a man, 40 years and older, and climb a tree and wave to people passing by. It'll be in that moment you realize this is strange. And they'll say, this neighborhood is strange. I'm never going to go there again. It's not normal. Jesus is walking by, and he sees this man in a tree. And I don't know if you saw it. Look at what he said. And Jesus, verse 5, came to the place, and he looked up. Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must, I must stay at your house today. Uh, Zacchaeus did whatever he needed to to overcome his obstacles, but in this moment, Jesus, Jesus sought out Zacchaeus. I wonder if Zacchaeus didn't climb the tree, if as Jesus was making ways through the crowd, that he would still find this man that clearly he was intentional at finding because the way the story sets up is that Zacchaeus has yet to meet Jesus, and Jesus has yet to meet Zacchaeus, yet Jesus knew his name. Jesus arrives here and sees this man and says, Zacchaeus, Calls him by name. C calls him by name. Jesus knows the name of the man everyone else wants to forget about or put shame on. The name that if it's heard amongst the crowds, it's with disdain. This one name carried a lot of weight with it within Jericho's walls. This was a name no one else wanted to utter and everyone else wanted to forget. Yet Jesus arrives to that spot, looks at this man, and calls him by name. And doesn't just call him by name, but says, hey, I need to go to your house today. Now, I was always taught, I don't think that's good etiquette, like social <laughs> etiquette. I was always told growing up that you don't invite yourself over to someone's house. And so what I would do as a, as a kid, I was like, hey, I want to come to your house. Can you, can you invite me? And, and then go tell mom, hey, mom, I was invited over to their house. And like, did you ask to go over? Did they ask you? No, they asked me, right? She didn't know any of the planning that was going on, but this is what, what would happen. Because it's not really good etiquette to invite yourself over to someone's house. But Jesus sees this man and says, I, I must I must go to your house. Jesus could have avoided this man. He was kind of on a schedule. He was on his way to Jerusalem. He was about to lay down his life for the sins of humanity. He could have ignored him, not even noticed that he was there. He could have continued on. He could have talked to many other people, but for some reason, instead, Jesus seeks out a man that no one else wanted and everyone else hated. Um, not only does Jesus know him by name, but he invites himself over to the house of Zacchaeus. Now, I don't know if you caught it. No one else liked this, right? Um, here's what happened. Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. Verse 6, so he hurried. Zacchaeus hurried, hurried and came down and received him joyfully. 
We were in the room before we came out here um, uh, this morning, about 9.45, all the, the, uh, the team that was serving here prayed together. And one of the, the prayers that, that, that Luke offered was that he wanted this place to understand the joy that we have. And I think that's been lost. We're so consumed with everything else this world has to offer. We're pulled in so many different directions. And I think we've lost the idea that in receiving Jesus, there is a joy that overtakes us. There's a joy that should happen. There's not a burden anymore. In fact, that burden's been lifted. It's been replaced with joy. And so what's going on here is that Zacchaeus hurries on down from this tree because Jesus invited himself over to Zacchaeus' house. And Zacchaeus says, please... Let's go. With much joy, the notorious sinner and receives joyfully the sinless one? Like, what is it about Jesus that he captivates the hearts of the worst of the worst? What is it about Jesus that even though he's the sinless one, him coming over to your house is okay? Depending on who you invite over to your house will probably depend on how you clean your house. Correct? Like, you'll probably, if if certain people are coming over, you may move certain things. You're like, if they, they from church, if they come up, we got to move, we got to move this. They can't. And so you put it in another room. Hopefully they don't go. Like, depending on who you invite over, you will arrange your house. What has happened where we've become so judgmental? But when Jesus interacts, <coughs> excuse me, with sinners, the worst, they're like, man, you can come over today. I don't need to move anything. Come on out. Come on. How did Jesus love differently than we do. That he was so welcomed and received by those who were sinners. It's different. And then we as a church, the body of Christ, are supposed to love like he he loved. Jesus' interaction with sinners is so mind-bending. No other person has ever walked This earth has cared for the human heart like Jesus. No one. And Jesus is the perfect creator of the heart. So please, if if I could, I need you to know this. That no matter how inadequate or insufficient you feel, your heart is safe with Jesus. You can feel wretched, sinful, disliked by everyone else. But I'm telling you that no matter how you feel, your heart is still still safe with Jesus. Um, Zacchaeus received (coughs) Jesus joyfully. Zacchaeus didn't have to do anything to get Jesus' attention. Did you see that? He was in a tree, which might have been strange. But he wasn't calling out his name screaming. He just wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus is the one that initiated the conversation with Zacchaeus, which is great. Because you've heard me say this, and I need you to understand the gravity of the statement. That if one of my children walk into this room as their father, they don't need to dance or sing or yell for me to have their attention. As the moment they walk into this room as my child, they have my attention. Therefore, they dance, they talk, and they sing. The difference of what's going on here is that we think that we need to perform in order to get God's presence near us. And what happens is his presence is already here. Therefore, we dance. It changes everything. It moves away from legalism and invites a certain type of rest that I think most people have never experienced. That the creator of this universe has already bent his ear and put his gaze upon you and I. What? So, 
not only does Zacchaeus receive Jesus joyfully, but he is so captivated and moved by the presence and the kindness of Jesus that he responds with giving away his wealth to those that are in need. Did you see that? Like this was his response. Jesus comes over. We don't even get to see the conversation. Now I will say the crowd didn't like what was going on. They grumbled. And I would always caution you or warn you um, that a grumbling crowd is a dangerous crowd. If you keep company with grumbling people, it's dangerous. Because in that moment, it could rob you of the joy that's trying to be given to you through Jesus. A grumbling crowd is a dangerous one. But either way, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will restore it fourfold. So half I'll give to the poor, and the other half of my wealth I will give back to those who I may have defrauded. Zacchaeus is doing something um, that is interesting because if you don't know the chapter before in um, Luke 18, Jesus has a man who approaches him. It is a rich young ruler. And this rich young ruler comes up to Jesus and says, hey, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Essentially, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And in this moment, we have Zacchaeus, who now has Jesus in his home, and he's not asking, what must I do? He's actually blown away by the presence of Jesus. And so his response is, this is what I'm going to do, not to get something, but because I already have you. Zacchaeus didn't give to get. He gave because he already had. Jesus was so valuable to Zacchaeus that nothing else mattered. And I would contend that the only thing that mattered, which is interesting, was the restoring of community that Zacchaeus created havoc in. He's willing to give money back fourfold to anyone he's wronged. There's something about Jesus that doesn't just reconcile us to God, but reconciles us to one another. There is something going on here that you and I need to understand. Zacchaeus impoverished himself by giving away his earthly wealth because he already gained a seat at the table with Jesus. Listen, this is easy with a group of teenagers, I'm going to be honest with you. A group of teenagers, because they're a little bit more malleable, it's, I can ask the question, have you given all to Jesus? And they would answer, no. But I want to, depending on the setting. I stand in front of a group of adults. What ends up happening is, have you given your all to Jesus? You're like, yeah, I checked that box. You haven't come to the place of even impoverishing yourself for the gain of what Jesus brings to the table. That what ends up happening is that we tend to value so many other things, and Jesus is just an add-on. And I would contend that if we value our life apart from Jesus, we will struggle valuing Jesus. But if you find your life of no value without Jesus, then he will be worthy of everything to you. Listen, I'm not, I'm going to try not to point this out, but I'm standing up here worshiping during the music, and I, I look over and I see children worshiping. And it wrecked me. Maybe what we need more of is a humbling of our own lives as we exalt the exalted one. And then in doing that, he brings us up with him. The difference between Zacchaeus and the rich young ruler is that Zacchaeus already had everything he could have ever wanted the moment Jesus entered into his house. And I would argue that Zacchaeus had everything he needed the moment Jesus uttered his name under that sycamore tree. You mean you know me? And you didn't say my name with disdain? And you want to come to my house? There's something that Jesus' presence does to break down the walls of a heart. 
So, in my conclusion, I, I want to share with you this last phrase that I think has so much there. Look at verse 10. And Jesus says this, For everyone to see and hear, the Son of Man, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. If you underline or highlight anything in your Bible, I need you to underline and highlight this phrase that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is an incredible statement that displays the, consi- excuse me, the consistency of God's heart for humanity. He has always been in the business of seeking and saving the lost. It is interesting to me that Jesus is in the house of a very wealthy man who has done very well for himself. Occupationally, climbing the corporate ladder, who is living in a beautiful city, sitting back, not lacking much at all. And yet Jesus, in his presence, makes this statement, that I came to seek and save the lost. Which means that Zacchaeus was was lost. You don't want to be found unless you finally come to the realization that you're lost. If you don't understand that you are lost, you won't be found. Even if the one trying to find you is standing in front of you. You think, I'm not lost. My logic, my understanding, my abilities, my goodness, my kindness, my wealth, my status, that's all I need. Until you realize it's not enough. And so what happens is there needs to be this moment where you and I need to come to grips with our lostness so the one who came to seek and find will find us. And so here's my question. When did Zacchaeus finally realize he was lost? Um, Would it have been Maybe late at night as he's trying to go to sleep. And he's thinking about how lonely he is because his power and status ostracized him from the community. Is that when he was thinking in his mind, you know what? I I have the power and the status, but I'm lonely. Was it the moment that in the chase and pursuit of money and wealth, he realized it left him empty? And he finally realized this is not enough. Was it on the way back from defrauding someone that he knew from taxing them the way that he did, that family would not be able to feed their own children? And maybe for a moment on that walk, he thought, man, I'm such a wretched man. Maybe it wasn't until he ran and climbed a sycamore tree and actually caught the gaze of Jesus that he finally came to grips with, I'm empty and lost. Maybe it was the moment that Jesus was standing before him in his own house, everything he has done to gain what he has, and Jesus is standing there before him, and he finally comes to grips with what every human heart is trying to display, that we are broken and lost without the one who created it, and his name is Jesus. Maybe it was in that moment, face to face with the Savior of the world, he finally realized He was lost. So here's my question for you. Have you actually come to terms with the fact that if Jesus came to seek and save, that I first need to confess that I'm lost? And then the receiving him joyfully is a natural response to his invitation. I'll do it this way. There's, there's a parable that Jesus teaches. And I think we have it backwards. You've probably heard it. Jesus teaches it this way. This man found a treasure hidden in the field. Treasure hidden in the field. 
It's excited. Found this treasure. Went and sold everything he had so that he could buy the field and have the treasure. And so what we have made it is that we're the ones who have found Jesus. And so we sell everything. We do things like, I'm going to give you my life. I'm all yours. We do these kinds of things. We sell everything. We find and buy this field. Now we have Jesus. He's our greatest treasure. But I don't think that that's actually accurate with Jesus' statement here. Who's the one that came to seek and save the lost? Jesus. So I wonder if that parable is actually describing that the treasure hidden in the field is humanity that has been lost without Jesus. And Jesus steps down off of his throne, gives up everything, glory and honor, steps down into the fray of our broken world and is willing to give up everything in pursuit of the treasure. How in the world would he call you and I a treasure? I don't feel like a treasure. But yet for some reason, God looks down and he sees in this field a treasure because he knows he created those who are lost. And Jesus was willing to give up everything, his own life, to buy back what was already his. This is consistent with all of scripture. God has always been in the business of seeking and saving. He called Abram. He sought out Abram. He sought out Sarah. He sought out David. He sought out Noah. All of this, you read through the scriptures, you see that God has always been in the business of seeking people out. So what we want to do is provide a place here to be sought. So if you would, close your eyes for me. You can turn the house lights off. Maybe, maybe the thing that you need to hear before we enter into a time of worship is that no matter where you've been and what you've done, God looks down and still considers you a treasure. That's why he sent a son. Maybe you don't feel that way. Maybe you feel less than that. I want you to hear that you are unbelievably valuable to God. And as Jesus walked through the crowd and said Zacchaeus' name, so is he saying your name right now. He knows you by name. It wasn't that Jesus went to the cross for a crowd. Jesus went to the cross and you could hear whispered into your heart that he came for you, your name. Maybe... Maybe you haven't got to the point of brokenness where you've realized that you're lost. And you need to wrestle with that. Maybe like many of us in this room, you find yourselves wandering. That even in this moment, you're struggling because you've gone to places that you don't even want to confess to. Maybe you just need to spend time in this space because you haven't done it enough to thank God for seeking and saving you. Either way, what we're gonna do is that Luke's gonna sing this song. I'm gonna invite up those who we have that pray with people, come up forward. I don't know where you're at, and I don't know what you've been walking through. But if you just need encouragement, you just need someone to battle with you in prayer, to remind you that there is victory found in Jesus, I'm gonna ask you to come get prayer. There's something about the heart where when we finally make a step and move, it does something beautifully within. So maybe you just need to come to the front and bow, kneel down and sing. Maybe you have some things you need to confess and deal with. Maybe you just want to stand and praise and sing. Either way, we're going to provide an opportunity in this moment to spend time with the one who chases us down. So Father, in this moment, I pray that you work in the hearts of those of us in this room. 
to remind us that you came by sending your son to seek and save those who are lost. You have not stopped chasing us. We thank you. This is your moment. If you'd like to come forward, come now. You found me in fig leaves. Who told you you were naked? You found me in fig leaves, and you clothed me in your blood. sin. You found me in my deepest depths of darkness. So you found me on the ocean floor where you cast my sin. And you found me in my deepest depths of darkness. Because you don't stop chasing You don't stop chasing me. And you don't stop chasing me. No, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't.
If there's anything I want you to know here this morning, is that the creator of the universe, God himself, through his son Jesus, has not stopped and will not stop chasing you. So whether it is you still want to come and get prayer, or you want to lift your hands and sing, we're going to spend the next three hour, two, yeah. and no, I'm just, just kidding. We're going to spend the next moment in a sweet time of worship. And if, it's, if there's a struggle for you to engage in the heart of God through worship, maybe it's in this moment you need to have God, remind me that I'm a son first, a daughter first. Not a man, not a woman, but a son and a daughter who's been chased down and rescued, redeemed, and saved, saved by you. So this moment is about our King, our Savior, Jesus. church with my arms stretched wide I will worship you so I throw my hands and praise you again and again so I have is a Come on, my soul. 
Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your songs. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Your sons and your daughters, we sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. Every voice, here we go. So I throw up my hands. For a king, except for a heart singing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So come on, my soul, oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your songs, cause you've got a light inside of those lungs. So get up and praise the Lord. Oh. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy of me, lift up your songs Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs well, Get up and praise the Lord Cause all the earth will shout your praise Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing Great on all the earth. Let's sing it. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you Lord. All the earth. Come on. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing Great are you, Lord One more time, all the earth, all the earth, come on And all the earth will shout your praise Come on, tell him So we pour our praise, we pour our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour our praise to you, only it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour our praise, we pour our praise, it's your breath in our so we pour our praise to you only. I'm going to give you one more chance. Come on, all the earth, all the earth will shout his praise. Amen? Come on, listen, if Ohio State scored a touchdown, you would shout. I know it. But the King of Kings has defeated death, carved into the grave, called you by name, made you new. That's a reason to shout. That's a reason to pray. Come on, men, lift up your voice. Come on, church, shout a praise this morning. Shout of praise this morning. Come on, here we go. And all the earth will shout your praise. Your hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Now it's not.
not the time to be silent. Come on, here we go. Don't get shy. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say, Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our In our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour a little bit in our lungs, so we pour. this old hymn. Sing it this morning. This sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. And how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, and how great Thou art. Let's sing it together. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. And how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Every voice, every voice, tell then sings my so my Savior God to thee oh, 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 how great thou art and how great thou art tell him he's great can you tell him he's great and how great thou art how great Thou art. Jesus, you are so good. You are so good. Lord, we just celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your grace. We thank you that you call us sons and daughters. That you sold everything you had to buy the field. And you call us your treasure, Jesus. Let's one more time. Come on. Then sings my come on church
I just had Billy walk by me and say, this must be what heaven's like. Sorry. Father, all I can say is, wow. I know that there's people in this room right now that are carrying some heavy burdens. Me being one of them. And just sitting in the back doing sound, I just was thinking, Father, just I, I just have to give it over to you. We have to give it back to you because we cannot carry it. If we continue to carry it, it makes us further and further away from you. Lord, I know a lot of us, our souls are broken right now. But there's one thing that brings me joy, brings me hope. That you've done something for me that I could never do for myself. You defeated death when we should be hanging there instead of you. For the things that we have done, the things that we live through. So my prayer is, Lord, that we don't forget what it felt like the first time we declared who you were. We gave our life to you. Lord, my prayer is that we don't lose the wonder. I pray that we can just go back to being a kid and just trust that when we do throw our hands up, that you're there to scoop us up. Lord, just... I just ask that we can just never forget the moment that we feel in right now. Yes, it is a high, but in when we're in our low moments that we can call back this, this very moment, this very Sunday, that it's not the four walls that we come to worship in, it's the people who we worship with and the person that we worship. Lord, that's my prayer. Just don't let us forget what that feels like to, to, to have that wonder, just constantly knowing that you're pursuing after us and Lord, I heard it this morning when we had prayer during rehearsal that kick us off our own throne. It's time for us to get off that and place you there right in the middle of it all. And my prayer is, Lord, I know it's going to be harder than me just saying it, but we know that you can help us do that. Lord, just don't let us lose our wonder. For it's your name we pray. Thank you for listening to Crosslink Community Church Podcast. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.crosslinkchurch.com or join us in person on Sunday mornings at 1020 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss a single message and share with a friend. Thank you again for listening.